All right, so if you haven't realized by now, you're probably thinking, oh my God, beautiful soup is vast. And trust me, that's true. There are tons of ways you can filter down through that tree. There's concepts like siblings, you know, next elements, previous elements, going back and forth, stuff like that. Except I won't be covering everything because, um, I mean, there are things that you don't really need to know, things that are way too complicated. So I'll stick with, you know, stuff that we've already covered. So the next concept and the next um, item in the list of beautiful soup is searching, okay? So how do we search through this module? I mean, by now we have learned that, hey, we can drill down stuff like that, except why even drill down? Why not directly search and find for the specific HTML tag we're looking for, right? It's gonna save us a ton of time and we don't have to drill down. So this is the concept of filtering, right? So the find all, I mean, I think we've talked about it in a previous lecture, but let's go ahead and cover some use cases with the find all function. So the first one, again, would be soup.findall, and then you pass in what do you want to find. So let's say I wanna find all the p tags, okay? Hit enter, you get all these different p tags, right? So this p tag over here, this p tag over here, and another one over here. We have three p tags, right? And it returned us an array in which we can iterate through that. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and try one more. Soup dot, I'm sorry, soup dot find all. Um, let's do a tags. What do we get? We have a class sister, id link one, a class sister, id link two, and id link three. So pretty neat. Now let's say I told you, hey, I don't want you to find me all these different A tags. I want you to find me the one which has the ID of link two, okay? And you're like, okay, sure, that makes sense. How do I do that? Well, what you can do is you can easily say soup.findall and then you can pass in the parameter ID is equal to um, whatever the ID was. So our ID, let's say we're searching for link two, right? Um, all we have to do is say ID is equal, equal to link two. And we get empty, that's because I made a mistake here. It's actually supposed to be, you're not supposed to put ID and the equal sign in the quotation marks. So ID is equal to link two. If you hit enter, we get, ta-da, the link two. Now let's say you had a P tag, which had the ID of link two. So you had a paragraph, which had the ID of link two, and you had an anchor tag, which had the ID of a link to. And I told you, I don't want any paragraph tags, I only want the anchor tag. So the way you can do that is using our function up top, ID is equal to link to, and you're searching for an A tag, okay? So A comma ID is equal to link to, and what does that do? It returns us the only match which has an anchor tag and the ID of link to. So by now I think you're realizing, hey, there are a lot of different ways to search in the beautiful soup module. Now, other things we can do, suppose we wanna find all the tags that start with B, okay? Um, to do that, we need to import the read module again. And the way this is gonna work is, um, let's say, right, so all the tags that start with B. So for tag in soup.findall, and now we're gonna use a read function here, read.compile. And basically what read.compile does is searches for everything that starts with B. Do that, read.compile um, the arrow key, the, I guess the alligator mark and B. So for tag and soup.findall read.compile B, all we have to do now is just say print tag.name, okay? Um, put that in quotation, I'm sorry, not quotation marks, but brackets and hit enter. What happens? We get body and B. So take a look at how this code worked. Um, for tag and soup.findall, again, it's gonna search through the whole um, beautiful soup. We're searching for any um, sentences or the, we're compiling through that whole document to search for anything that starts with the letter B. So this signifies that we're searching for the starting of B, okay? And then all we're doing is we're printing the tag.name. We got body and we got B. So pretty cool, right? Now, let's say you wanted to search for anything that had the letter T in it, okay? So go ahead and bring this down. And if you wanna search for any tag which starts or has the letter T, what you do is you remove the alligator sign and just type in T. 
So for tag in soup.findall, we do compile t, print tag.name, hit enter, we get HTML and title. As you can see, the T in HTML is in the middle, whereas the two T's in title are in the beginning and the middle. So it basically searches for any word which has the letter T in it, okay? So again, there are many different ways that you can search through a beautiful soup document, right? We've talked about a few, let's go ahead and cover maybe one or two more. Um, again, like we have done before, let's say you wanna search for the title, right? So soup.findall and then you can just search for the title. So again, a very simple usage like we've talked about. You can get the title as well. Um, again, let's see. Uh, so we've learned about searching via an ID. Um, you can search via a class again. So soup.findall. Um, let's say I wanna get the class equal to sister. Okay, hit enter. Does that work? No, it doesn't. So I guess you can only search by ID. Um, you can also search by href. So soup.findall um, over here, you can say href is equal to re.compile and let's say you wanna search for LC, okay? Hit enter, Where we, there we go, we get the first one, a class is equal to sister, href is equal to blah, 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 slash LC, okay? And you can also then specify the ID as well. So you can say um, soup.findall this and then comma ID is equal to link one. So that will completely make sure that it's um, the first A, okay? So I'm gonna end this lecture here. Again, there's quite a lot of ways you can search through a beautiful soup module. Let's go ahead and recap. We learned about the find all function. We learned how to search with IDs. We can specify what the ID is equal to. We learned about the read.compile function that searches through the whole document for um, either uh, a word or a sentence starting with the letter B. And then we can search the whole document for any word that starts with the letter T. Okay, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and bring this down. Um, whoops, bring this down. And instead of saying print tag.name, let's go ahead and print out tag and see what happens. If you hit enter, it returns you um, the whole thing. And why is that? Because the body, okay, okay, um, I'm sorry guys. So take a look at this. Um, we did for tag and soup to find all, read up, compile, and then the uppercase B. And what that did is um, we got the whole tag. Okay, I'm sorry, it wasn't the specific word. Tag.name gave us the specific word, but by calling this, this um, read up, compile uppercase B, we can get the entire tag. So if we did, um, you know, read up, compile body, we would get the body tag, stuff like that. But anyways, awesome job. Um, we talked about using the href as well. So we can search for specific um, things in the link. And again, we did another example of ID. So awesome job guys. Um, this again was a quick way or quick ways to search through a beautiful soup document and get the specific things you require. I think by now you should have a good idea of this is how beautiful soup module works. This is how I search through it. This is how I drill down. And I think we're ready to drill down now or actually get some information out. So in the next lecture, we'll work with a weather website. I know we've already done weather in the remodule, but let's go ahead and do it again and see if we can get the data that we require. See you in the next lecture.